Hey yo, what's up YouTube? What's up my people? What's up my favorite subscribers? If it's your first time to the channel, welcome to Africa Lessons. My name is Podisa. Um, today we're going to be reacting to something different. Something different. We have Trevor Noah. Um, my, I'll call him my homeboy because we're from the same country. And um, I mean, I just saw this video and it's been trending. So I don't know. I mean, I love Trevor Noah. I follow him. So I'm not sure what it's all about. Normally, Trevor Noah doesn't go on verses with anyone. Like, with anyone. No one goes... I mean, not that no one goes against Trevor. It's just that I don't know why people will put the verses. So I just saw Thomas Sowell. I don't even know who that is. Versus Trevor Noah. I'm like, this is interesting. I'm assuming that maybe this guy, Thomas, is a comedian. Uh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe. Of course, they came to this. I think this is the first time that we reacted to like something either the music in this, to this channel, right? In the, on this channel, I don't think we've ever listened to anything but music on this channel. So yeah, hopefully this is received well. I don't know. Question to your question. I think you have to understand what the word reparations means first. So reparations, you are repairing something that you have broken. You are paying for something that you were supposed to pay for. I'm not saying that there aren't people living in America today who are suffering and are going through pain and strife because of what's happening when it comes to um, you know, the machines taking jobs, uh, factories becoming industrialized, etc. But reparations is a specific conversation about a specific time in America, and that is black people were slaves. Article that got a lot of attention in The Atlantic a couple of years ago. Okay. That's a fact. Black people in America were slaves, and um, I mean, reparation is the only good thing to do, according to my opinion, at least, and of course, according to Tre Trevor's opinion, etc. But reparations is a specific conversation about a specific time in America, and that is, black people were slaves. Article that got a lot. Yeah, basically, the reparation is compensation for the wrongdoings that were done by the imperialists to those who they colonized basically so if you have wronged a certain people without them doing anything provoking you whatsoever for example in south africa there's a guy by the name of jan van Riebeck who came here and colonized the whole of south africa you know all the indigenous people including those who migrated from africa somewhere in the east to south africa and killed a lot and enslaved a lot. His, his um, grandchildren came up with a system called apartheid to keep the, the natives of this um, country marginalized, to keep them poor, you know, treat them like subhumans. And then years later, I mean, if you really feel sorry about it, you need to make sure that. You know, I mean, sorry is cool for you to admit that you've done wrong, but at the end of the day, you need to say, you need to do something about it because you've oppressed me for so many years. <laughs> I mean, yo, pay me, bro. Like, like, if you don't pay me, like, give me opportunities. Like, make sure that I have opportunities. You know, if there is a, if, if, the, if, if I'm qualified, make sure that I get that opportunities. Don't, don't try and, and, oppress me using other techniques you know because we know that the system is rigged to favor those who created it so if they created a system that we are that is called capitalism they're gonna rig it as much as they can to favor them and their children um and so that's what they need to try and amend they need to change that that needs to change if it's not money then to make sure the system is changed not to be um, discriminatory um, against other races. Uh, yeah. In the Atlantic a couple of years ago called The Case for Reparations by ta -Nahisi Coates. Quote, white supremacy is a force so fundamental to America that it is difficult to imagine the country without it. Reparations is the price we must pay to see ourselves squarely. Close quote. Yeah, yeah, I mean, let's reset, you know, of course, logically, you know, and logistically, that is like impossible, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't do it, it shouldn't mean that we should strive towards it, 
Uh, it means that it should just be determined. Hold on. And Tom Sowell, who actually saw Jim Crow with his own eyes and experienced it, responds, the price we must pay to see ourselves squarely. Close quote. And Tom Sowell, who actually saw Jim Crow with his own eyes and experienced it, responds, how? It would be, oh, so this guy was living through John, Jim Crow. Uh, okay. Interesting. So that will be an interesting response then. How want to hear. No, as an experienced it, response, how? It would be nice to know his, uh, to what he said, just to be old fashioned about it. Uh, no, it, 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 it was a rotten system. But I don't know how, how, how we get from that to reparations. I mean, what we see in the United States in terms of the bad things, you see all around the world. If you were to give reparations to everyone whose ancestors had been slaves, I suspect that you would have to give them. Wait, 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 wait. I'm confused, sir. I'm sorry. I'm confused. What the hell? How you start off answering then was very confusing. It's not promising. Let's... In terms of the bad things, you see all around wait, wait. how we get from that to reparations. No, it, 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 it was a rotten system. Yes. What was this question again? Slavery. Slavery. Ah. It would be nice to know his... Uh, Dang. Wait, wait, wait. Darn it, darn it, darn it, darn it. Tom Sowell, who actually saw Jim Crow with his own records, okay. that it is difficult to imagine the country without it. Reparations is the price we must pay to see ourselves squarely. Close quote. And Tom Sowell, who actually saw Jim Crow with his own eyes and experienced I agree. I agree. Now, reparation, I believe, in the context of amending the wrong that were done, um, by the imperialists to the natives of any land they colonized, I believe that 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 it can be systematically, right, politically, economically, it can be all of those in one. It can't be only one of them in order this to happen. So it needs to happen as as that package. Otherwise, I mean, I don't want money. Right, because I mean, I'm just gonna spend it. I want money and skills and know how and everything that comes with it. Tell me how to use it. How, 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 give me land, you know, like land. I don't, I don't want money. You can spend money, like, but land, I can rent it forever. You get what I'm saying? Like, I can rent you my land for as long as I want. I can plant, grow food, I can try and develop it. But money, cash, I wouldn't want that. Mm -mm. Nope. That's not reparation. That's buying me out. No, I don't want to be bought out. I want, I want to be amended. I want, I want to make sure that economically I'm secured. But you took away what was mine, and so you need to give it back, basically. You know, like you, you wasted so much of my years. Like you, you tortured me. You tormented me. Like you traumatized me. You know, I can't even act straight because of the horrors that I've seen through your hands. So. Just leave me alone. Ah. It would be nice to know his uh, evidence for what he said, just to be old fashioned about it. Uh, it would be nice to know the elements that he said, but if they are referring to what this guy is saying, it's, it's clear, you know? It's clear, those are the elements. Like stripped from their livelihood, forcefully so, tortured, murdered, hanged, um, necked, lynched, all sort of crazy things happened. And those, the people who did that are people who are foreign to the land, who just came and they realized because of their own superiority and, I don't know, the weapons that they've de developed, they killed everyone in order to colonize and they changed and they put segregated and oppressed, enslaved, came up with laws like Jim Crow, like apartheid, to keep generations to come oppressed. And once that, once they realize that, okay, you know what, we have done so many wrong in the world, we are ashamed, um, let's, try, let's say sorry, and then try and politically give them some rights.
to move around and do some stuff, but keep the economy to ourselves. And even though they are trying to strive, you know, to strive to be better and be economically self-sustainable, we prevent that from happening because we still control the means of production. The system is still ours. We put a lot of requirements and conditions in place to get into jobs and other things, industries, because we are security and I mean, because we are securing our our own knowledge because once they get they tap into it to that they might you know become more or they might know so much that they become that they, they overtake us man look reparation is the only thing that can happen in order to reset the time and put us all idealistically in a level pedestal no, it, 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 it was a rotten system. Yeah. But I don't know how, how, how do we get from that to reparations. I mean, what we see in the United Okay, let's see. In terms of the bad things, you see all around the world. Yeah. If you were to give reparations to everyone whose ancestors had been slaves, I suspect that you would have to give reparations to more than half the entire population of the globe. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like the way yeah, that's possible. That's definitely possible. Like that's definitely look, there are how many people in this world? There's like let's say that's possible. Like that's completely possible. I don't know why you're saying it as if it's impossible. No, it's possible. They are this there are about sixty there are about six billion, you know, people in the world. Like in the whole world, six billion. You can literally give each person in the world six billion. Six billion, like you can give them six billion rands and you'll be left with so much change. If six billion is a lot, you can give them one billion. Like what is six billion to any country? Tell me. No, I don't know which country is worth six billion, but I can talk about my country. It's worth trillions. We spend six billion like it's nothing. America, they spend, spend billion in their sleep. We talk about dollars now. So, I don't know why he's approaching this. If it's, it's, I have a feeling that he's going to say it's impossible, but it's not. I don't know who told him that it's impossible. It's not. And actually, it shouldn't be impossible because talking about South Africa, if you are a native to that country and there are people who came to colonize it, that's your country. They should give it to you. Simple as that. If they don't want to, then it's understandable. But don't don't make it like it's impossible. It's not even a choice. It's not a matter of if. No, it's a must. There's life for everyone. not confined to one set of races. I suspect that most of the people who... Sorry, what did you say? I suspect that you would have to give reparations to more than half the entire population of the globe. Yeah, more than half. That's nothing. That's nothing. This old man is not even thinking. Like, I don't know what he's like because he relieved through John, Jim Crow. He's supposed to know better. Come on. Like, nah. Sorry, sir. With all due respect, but you're not making sense. Theory was not confined to one set of races. I suspect that most of the people who. Of course, he was not confined to one set of race. There's so many races out there. I mean, you have the Indians that were colonized by the British. You have the Africans that were colonized by everyone in Europe. You have the, you, you, I mean, you have the Europeans that even went to the Americas and colonized everyone in the Americas. The, the Aborigines in Australia, those are all different races. You know, they're all different races. I've never heard of, I mean, I've, in history, there's no um, African state that, I mean, African country that went to a European uh, country and colonized that European country. I've never heard of that. If, if there is such, please, hey, let me know. I would love to read such a piece of history. I've never heard of it. So, we, yeah, man, don't, don't, be, don't, be, don't, don't try to be technical because it's not even making sense. It doesn't matter how technical you are, still the same thing. Slaves or slave owners around the world were neither white nor black. Uh, 
Yeah, it's like, look. But who was the, I mean, this is, look, the majority were white. The majority were Caucasian. The majority were Europe, Europeans, right? I mean, it doesn't matter that you're not going to have one or two people out there that might do bad things. But it's not the whole of the African people that did this. Not at all. Not at all. It's a minute I don't even I don't even know them basically. I I don't even they are so insignificant to what the whole of Europe has done in terms of when it comes to enslaving, um, colonizing, um, oppressing, uh, marginalizing. Like this 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 like the whole of Europe. Everything. Like all of all of them. Each country has done something. Outside their own little continent out there in the Caucasian islands, mountains. So, Caucasus Mountains. So, I mean, man, I don't know where this old man is trying to get to, but it's so this was a universal curse of the human species. Africa, the Middle East. Asia. Universal curse for who? For who? I can tell you for who? For Africans, yes. For anything other than Europeans. Yes, true, facts, I agree. No aborigine from Australia went to Europe, Europe to Europe to colonize, oppress, enslave. No. No Indian did that. No. No African state country did that. I don't know of any. No. No Native American America. You know, south or north. No, they didn't. According to my understanding of history, none of them did. It. If they did, I don't know. Please point me to the source so that I can read who actually did that to Europe. Because that, that's something that they need to publish and make known. Because so that they can say, it's not only us, but I don't hear them saying that. I don't hear that. At least I'm in Africa. I will tell. I can tell straight. I don't hear that. Oh, yeah, and, and, that and, and, and and it continued elsewhere long after uh, it, it was abolished in the Western countries. Right. You know what I mean? It's, I've even heard people say like, "Oh, yeah. but there were some of the Irish who were indentured." Like, yeah, less slavery. Look at the numbers. Look at the time. Look at the level of work. You could not work toward your freedom for most. Black people in America, this was a time when you were, that was, you lived and died as a slave. And so that's what reparations is about. The other thing, I have a slight um, sidebar on the, on the history of slavery. Mm -hmm. The history of slavery, slavery existed all over the world for thousands of Like it's so, it's such a shame for an old, <laughs> and it's very unheard of, because African black men, especially old men, they're wiser than this. Like their intelligence is much more higher than this. Like this guy is just saying it happens all over the world. Where, where, by who? Why? Why don't, don't? Why that? Why isn't that taught in Europe, in European universities or colleges or whatever school system they have there? And why is this not like? Why is not made public? Don't you think that the Europeans would love to capitalize on that narrative? They would love to, but is there evidence to this? Is there evidence to this? There is no evidence. That's why they can't capitalize on it. They can't use it. To argue the fact that they did nothing, that this was happening all over the world, so they are justified for doing it themselves. They can't. It's nowhere to be found. So I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't know. What's what's what with this guy? I don't, I really don't know. Because I mean, it it will just make what Mandela fought for ridiculous, right? Because Mandela fought for reparations, fought for economical emancipation, he fought for freedom, 
He was jailed for 20 something years, 27 years. In an island isolated. By who? By black people? No. And this was just in the 21st century, actually, if not the 20th century. It was just 1990, 1990, 1990. I mean, it was released in 1990. Hmm? Apartheid ended in 1994, to be exact. Actually, I wouldn't even say that it ended in 1996, but I will say that 1994, that's when it ended. So, like, this thing of it happened around, what, what, what is it getting to with this? Let me give him some time. Otherwise, I don't know if I want to keep on listening to him, but let's, before, because I started the video, let's just listen. But this is done. I bar me on the history of slavery. Mm -hmm. The history of slavery, slavery existed all over the world for thousands of years, among all sorts of people, as far back as the history of the human species goes. It's one of many evils that the left tries to localize, when, when in fact it is... There are no traces of this. Like, if something has been happening for such a long time, there must be traces of it. Like, there must be traces of... If he's claiming that... Like this thing has been happening for centuries all over the world, even amongst it's the same race. There must be traces of this. Like you should be able to track this somehow. There should be archaeological evidence, if not scripted. There must be something. If there's nothing, then it didn't exist. I don't care what you say. You can speculate all you want. We are talking about what currently is available. There is evidence. There's nothing that points that this has been set happening amongst these certain races, which I mean I'm speaking as an African because it's black. African races. No, 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 no. There isn't such. Like slavery was never a trade. Right? It was never like a big trade. It was never nah. If it, it, if it happened, I'll say that it happened privately. It was not, like, there was no market. There was no JSC. There was no, like, Wall Street, you know, people trading on slavery. There was no such. I don't want to believe it. Like, there, there wasn't. Because there's no traces of these things. There's, these things are not there. I mean, if they were there, they would be exposed by now. There's a universal evil. But more than that, as much as slavery is repudiated around the world today, prior to the 18th century, I know of no serious effort to abolish the institution anywhere. 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 Not in Africa, not in, not oh, in the Caribbean. Not in Africa in the 21st century. Mm. Uh, Adam Smith wrote in 1776 that the only place in the world where slavery had been abolished completely was Western Europe. Who fucking controls the like who controls the world like just sit there old man and think about it and for you to even give credit to the west for abolishing slavery who, who they started it they ran with it they created empires with it and they're still benefiting from those empires and they still continue with it systematically so by the power of the dollar is still doing it. So how do we abolish something that you didn't even start? That you don't even consider? Like, I mean, you don't even know that it, it doesn't even exist in your mind. We are just happy that we are free and we are able to do what we are able to do. You know, without any death consequences. We are just, we are just, we're just happy about that. So slavery doesn't exist in our minds and in our lives, it doesn't. So, and we didn't even start it. So we, know, we don't even know how, to, how it works. So how would we abolish it? Because we didn't systematically make it a way of life. But in America, the West, they made it a way of life. So they must abolish it because they made laws. So we didn't create those. I mean, imagine us creating laws to, abort, to, to, to enslave ourselves. We didn't do that. And he's lying, saying that, the, I mean, 
Uh, slavery is abolished in Africa. There's no. I'm gonna say in most African countries, there's there's no there's no slavery. I can tell you about the southern um, countries. There's no even the eastern. You know, just slavery is it's a far fetched phenomenon in Africa. It's not. It's, it's, I don't know where it exists to be honest. So what he's saying, I don't. I don't know. Like I don't know. Uh, and so this was as late as as late as the as late as the year this country was founded. Yes. And so the idea that this is something that the United States had that nobody else had, or or the other other countries that didn't have, uh, it's been estimated that there are more slaves in India than in the entire Western Hemisphere. And that's huh? What? There are more slaves. They had that nobody else had, or or the, the other other countries that didn't have. Uh, it's been estimated that there are more slaves in India than in the entire Western Hemisphere. Yeah, India. And that's, okay. quite, and that's before and after Columbus uh, got here. Right. Uh, and so I hear what you're saying, but I think that's a completely separate conversation. But he's saying that they are, I don't know. Please, he must prove what he's saying. I don't know. I've never heard of that. We have Indians in South Africa. Like, they've never mentioned that. They don't even say that that needs to be had about the now because if you if you are not careful what you then do is you combine everybody's suffering into the same ball and you make it seem like all injustices have the same weighting and they don't just like crimes you know theft isn't the same as murder we don't try them the same way mm -hmm. and as much as there is a white person who's suffering today I feel for anybody who's suffering because I know what it's like to be poor I know what it's like to suffer I didn't come from a wealthy family we struggled when I was growing up but I also understand that there are levels of that suffering, you know? And so sometimes white people, it, it, does, it does block a white person because you go, white privilege, and the person goes, I'm poor and I'm white, where's the privilege? You know, white people are like, I wish I could activate my white privilege. I wish I could do it right now. White privilege, give me something. I, I get that. I get that, trust me, I get it. It is hard to accept that you have benefits because of the color of your skin if you cannot see the benefits that you have. The book that I'm writing now, I, I discovered this is true not only in the United States, uh, it's true in England, and the, and the situation is wholly different. And yet, if you read uh, the the data, for example, from from uh, London, the the, the uh, educational tests and so forth, you see that uh, and there, uh, immigrants from Africa uh, pass this test. They have uh, I'm talking about low income people now, uh, six, nearly sixty percent of the time. Uh, uh, blacks from uh, Caribbean, like fifty percent, so on. Native-born whites in the same low-income bracket pass this test 30% of the time. Uh, and it's the same thing. What test is that? The, the foreign people come in, they haven't had generations of being steeped in the welfare state vision, the vision of grievances, victimology, and resentments, the okay. idea that there are enemies out there dedicated to keeping you down. That's the, that, that's the message that's been pumped into the head of, of the white lower class in Britain. And that's the, uh, the image that's been pumped into the black low-income people in the United States. And the, and the results are the same in both cases. Um, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Um, but I can tell you what he's right on. Um, he's right on the fact that um, foreigners or immigrants who Im migrate or immigrate from wherever, they tend to perform better in, 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 in places where the indigenous or the natives are, you know? And, um, and I think, I mean, he's, he, he, he qualifies this by saying that it's because, it's because of victimizehood, if I'm hearing him correctly. And I think what, it, what, it, what he's saying is because, um, People feel people are dependent or they feel victim of what I don't know of whatever that is told to them and they believe in it and instead of bettering themselves they are focusing on what is being said about who did what to them. Um I understand that. I understand that to some because it can it can play it it can delay your development, your growth if you focus on it, but it doesn't mean that. It is not justified for you to feel victimized, angry, and um, 
Yeah, and just left out because, because I mean, your generations, you know, your forefathers, your family, your grandfather, like everything that comes before you, it went through this um, system of Jim Crow, system of colonization, system of oppression, slavery, torture. There's so much trauma there. And if you know anything about psychology, the trauma, depression, um, can be passed through um, generations. But look, <clears throat> some people can get out of it because they are gene genetically strong. Like, you know, some people's personality are alphas. So certain things, they don't get to them the same way as weak people do, right? So you have the strong and then you have the weak. But it doesn't mean that the weak are not justified, you know, by them feeling that way. They are justified because the shit happened for them to be in that position. It's just that they don't have the willpower to get themselves out of the force and look beyond that, right? And they shouldn't look beyond that. They should actually look at it and get those people to pay, you know, to make amends and make sure that they are at least materialistically not in a dire situation and then that hope and then fix that environment for them to start thinking and seeing opportunities like there are people who will see an opportunity in, the, in their darkest time and that doesn't mean that the person is 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 is, 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 is didn't, didn't suffer the same thing it just means that they they how they are genetically made is not to focus on problems and and, 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 and and the past, but to strive and to make sure that they succeed. And that and that, that is the, that is the personality thing. That's like I said, reparation must be political and economical, right? Those are the two important things before we get to the mental and emotional and every other thing. The thing I try to explain to a person is think of it more like golf. Don't think of it as privilege and think of it like a handicap. Right? In golf, they acknowledge that you are in a position where you need so many advantages to be competitive in the game. Is that, is that we ought not to be doing this? You know, there are, there are various uh, laws and policies that benefit one group at the expense of another. But I think affirmative action has the distinction of being one that it harms everybody, though in different ways. And so you, you, there's, there's a lot of evidence that there are black kids who have all the qualifications to be successful in college, who nevertheless are failures because they are systematically mismatched with institutions whose standards they don't meet, even though they may meet the standards of 80 or 90 percent of the colleges in America. I remember I first aware of this when I was teaching at Cornell, and I found that half the black students at Cornell. I'm not understanding the concept that he's speaking on here about you know 90 percent and all these other flipping ridiculous test that he's pulling from I don't know from who but one thing that I'm going to comment on is that um, um, what is it called in, uh, affirmative action is very important towards um, repairing the wounds and the scars left by slavery. The same in South Africa we have BEE which is Black Economic Empowerment. It's very important it's very important um, but it needs to be worked on because it does have uh, some disadvantages. It does make people very reliant to the system in terms of being self-productive um, and, and, and becoming, um, working themselves out of that situation where uh, they, they, they are not dependent to the so-called... Um, affirmative act so so yeah 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 but it's very important you can't you can't take it away it's a it, 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 it otherwise it, it, it has worked it has um managed to grow the black middle class especially in south africa in a very rapid rate and we are seeing that the fruits of that economy of that middle class um, towards the economy, being able to feed the economy um, to provide jobs for those who are much more disenfranchised um, than the rest of the, of the population. Well, we're on some kind of academic probation. And so I went over to the administration building and looked up the SATs of these students. 
The average black student at Cornell at that time scored at the 75th percentile. Which and, is pretty darn good. Yes. And so that means that in, that in most colleges in this country, they would have no trouble, and many of them would be on the dean's list. But at Cornell, the average uh, liberal arts student at that time was in the 99th percentile. And, and, when, you, when, you, and when you're teaching a student, students like that... What this, why, what this old man is forgetting is that the situation... For example, look at where the majority of black people live in. The environment. Look, they, like, way, like how? I mean, just the environment. Look at the hoods. Like where basically black people were moved forcefully away from the uh, away from the city or the land that is productive um, to live far away and to just fend for themselves with less I don't know, political freedom and economical freedom because all these roles were still there, you know, they couldn't do that and that and that and that and that and that. So they come from those backgrounds. They still, many of them still live in those type of backgrounds. So you look to you can you can't you can't you can't look down or shit on um a a a, a student for getting 75 marks and then um saying that but they didn't reach a 90 like by getting 75 percent but then reach a 90 percent of a um um ivy league white school um with all these privileged white Students, it, it is it is it is unfair. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. But you teach I don't at want pace. To, I don't want to make this video so long, but the, 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 there's so many things that this guy is not understanding. I don't know he's under his understanding like the the, 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 the the societal complexities of of what it means to be a black person in general. That most people of any race cannot keep up with. And I, I was, it was always complained that I was assigning all kinds of uh, reading. But heck, you know, I'm teaching kids who are the top 1%. They can, they, they can keep up with, it, with the reading that I'm assigning. Uh, so Cornell was taking very talented black kids and spending four years teaching them to feel inadequate. Yes, su and succeeding at that. Mm. Right, so what they say is you have a handicap of 15, so that means like you're going to be hitting from this tee and you get more chances to get the ball in because we understand the position you're in. And if you're a black person in America, from slavery, from day one. Pondering all this, I, I noticed something, a, a column that you wrote, this is a couple of years ago, in which you rebutted Nicholas Kristof of the New York Times. And Kristof had ascribed the gaps between African Americans and whites in America, gaps in wealth, gaps in educational achievement, the usual gaps. Mm -hmm. To and this is a quotation from Christoph to the lingering effects of slavery. Close quote. Oh yeah. And here's Tom Sowell. Quote: If we wanted to be serious about evidence, <laughs> we might compare where blacks stood a hundred years after the end of slavery with where they stood after thirty years of the liberal welfare state. In other words, we could compare hard evidence on the legacy of slavery with hard evidence on the legacy of liberals. Close quote. And the number of injustices that have held black people back in America amounts to an instant amount of like you, you look at you look at black people's freedom, you look at black people's land, just just land alone. The amount of wealth you can you can acquire over time if you own land is exponential because you have the land, you have the fact that you can borrow based on the land, you have the fact that you can use the money that you have borrowed to grow more wealth, you can use it to grow your family's wealth. Just taking that away from black people alone. Mm -hmm. Right, right, and also, Facts. so if you think you've been Facts. let no let let nobody tell you that owning land is not worth it. Like it has, it has no worth. Trust me. Look, <laughs> when the colonizers came here, when the imperialists come, came here, they they made sure that they take the land. That's where all the minerals are. That's where you can plant food. That's where you can feed yourself. Literally, that's where you can build stuff. It's on land. So for some, for someone to tell you that, like land is nothing, like to have more land is not worth it, or someone to ask you what are you gonna do with land, especially if it's your land, like you are native to the land, who the hell are you? Never mind what I'm gonna do with, me, with the land. Give it to me and I'll figure it out. You get what I'm saying? Why are you here, basically?
But if you think you've been wrong, your recourse might also be more likely to politics to try to to try to redress this whole redistribution yeah. Oh, yeah. rather than hit the books, acquire the skills, get the well, job. I, I, well, and and uh, the other thing too, I one of the That's a trick. <laughs> Yo, let me tell you something. Um at least about what I know about um, Jan van Riebeck or the people who came from, from, from the Netherlands to come and colonize, these guys were prisoners. They were not educated. Most of them, they were not. Even today, if you look at the, 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 the stats when it comes to um, educated um, white men and, you know, especially white men in, um, in, in corporate they're not that, they're not more educated than black people. No, they're not. Oh no, 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 no. It's either they have more experience because the grandfather, the uncle, the aunt, the father owns the com the company. That's the only difference. And so they're gonna have that skill. And that's the only thing they're gonna put you in, 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 in a disadvantage. So mm-mm. 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 Mm -mm. My favorite uh, statistic in there is that uh, the poverty rate among blacks as a whole is 22%. Mm -hmm. Among whites as a whole is 11%. And among black married couples is 7.5%. So, and, it's been, and, and black married couples have never had a, a poverty rate as high as 10%. In any year since 1994. All right. So to the to the to the crime, what is to be done? Tom Sowell answers. It's been done. Get an education. Stay married. Get married. Have kids after you get married. That that's sort of the answer, right? Well, yes. And the things that work for other people work work them tend to work pretty generally. Oh, all right. Is crippling them, and so you combine that with slavery, and then you look at Jim Crow law. You didn't let black people in America live in the areas that they wanted to live in. They couldn't get loans from the banks that they wanted to get loans from. And then on top of that, when they started getting the loans from American banks, American banks were found to be giving them higher interest rates when, in fact, they were the same risk as many of the other races that they were. That of course, were. they're gonna give them higher interest rates because you know what? Banks they don't just loan you money. No, they need security, surety. And if your grandfather never owned anything, if you can't say, hey, I'm putting my mother's farm or my father's farm or land or, I don't know, company or whatever wealth or that they, they acquired, asset they acquired. If you can't put an asset, you know, um, like as a bond with any bank, they're not going to give you that loan. Or if they do give you, they're going to make sure that interest rate is high because you are a high risk. It's simple. It can't, it, it, like, it, E-commerce, it's just simple commerce. That's why it's important to own land because you're gonna develop, build, create, produce from land. That's asset. Doesn't depreciate. It appreciates. That's true. So when you combine all of those things, I think it's safe to say that black Americans have a conversation that they need to be having with the United States. Doesn't involve me, doesn't involve white people, doesn't it's like it's like yo, American government, meet the black people. That's it. Have that conversation. In terms of political leaders, all the all the incentives politically are for, for black leaders to blame all problems in the black community on the larger society. And that enables them to take on the role of being the defender of the black community against enemies, which in turn uh, creates a situation in which many blacks don't feel that anything that they do is going to, is going to help themselves unless it's done politically as, as a group. That there's no point. I mean, why, why would you, if you believe what, the, what, that's what they say? Hey, wise men. <laughs> wise men. The reason why South Africa um, gained freedom, you know, black people, the, minute, the reason why we fought and we won is because we fought as a group. So to group towards a gigantic, to, I mean, towards a giant is important. Imagine, you know, you have to group because this was this, like you are fighting to the most powerful. So it's better to come in numbers. Numbers are important, especially in politics and to bring about change in anything.
That's why we call freedom. Because we had parties. And parties are groups of people coming together for one cause. With all those parties that will never even will if we could have if we were doing things individually that we would never we would have never attained this freedom. Never. We wouldn't. Martin Luther King had to come with the movement. So let's Malcolm X. They used different techniques, but the goal was one. The emancipation of black for, for black people. Freedom. Rights to life. And free movement. So why would you want to knock yourself out in the school knowing that the man is not gonna let you get anywhere? One of the most pathetic things I heard in recent years was a young black man saying... But those are opportunities. You're going to have opportunities in any society. You're going to have, but there's just a few, especially amongst black people. There are, there are people who are going to who are gonna try and capitalize and be selfish about and try and deceive people to believe something because they're gaining from it. That's... I mean, that... The, that is understandable, it is, and then most of the time there's a third force, and we know who the third force is the enemy. So, yeah, it's the money, the dollar. So, they made us to believe that the dollar is more powerful, and so, and that made, made us to believe that you can betray your own for a dollar. So, hey, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not saying that it's right for those individuals, you know, with so much will to, con to deceive um, people who are innocently trying to come out of a situation i'm not i'm uh, they are totally wrong for doing that you know but it's also up to us now to correct them it's not up to the other party to tell us if they are right or wrong one point he thought he would join the air force and become a pilot and then he says he realized that the white man is not going to let a black man become a pilot and he was saying this decades after the tennessee airmen had established their reputation in combat in Europe, you know. But but the hopelessness, hopelessness is, is one of the big products of the of the race industry. That, that you have you have no chance. I remember giving a talk at Marquette, and at the end of the talk, one of the questions. Yeah, but like I said, this passed through generations. In order to break the generation curse, you need to preach the, a different message. But they also need to see that message happening. So you can't have one or two people like being in the Air Force and you expect me to still believe. While I know that there's like thousands of other people who want the same thing. Or in my community, there's like 10 of us who want to become the same thing. But 10 of us are struggling to get to the same thing. I mean, you can't tell me that. Like, so what we need to preach also must re must also be manifested, you know. So I can't tell you something that's not there. I get what you're saying, but let's let's reality must match what must match theory and philosophy. If it doesn't, then yo, whatever that you're telling me is just fairy tale, according to my understanding. And that's going to be the word in the street. So, as a young, again, young black man got up and he said, even though I am graduating from Marquette University, what hope is there for me? And uh, having gone through college when I was in the 50s, I don't remember any blacks saying that in the 1950s, when there was a lot more obstacles to overcome than there were when this guy's graduating from Marquette. But you, but you have to pr pr produce that kind of feeling in order to serve the interests of those who... Because in the 1950s, wise men, you know, because in the 1950s, there was hope that black people are going to... Um, there was talks that black people, once they are free, they're going to be self-sufficient. They're going to build their own communities. They're not going to be dependent um, on, on the imperialist system, you know. There was no talks of integration um, to try and uh, and try to try and fool us on believing that we are gonna be one thing, knowing that that's not gonna be the case. It's just you're trying to silence us, you know, and tame us for a while until that you get your system even more complex for us to enter. So, like I said, it's a matter of personality. You know, some people are. Alphas, they are strong-willed, they fight and they go beyond 
and they think they don't let people tell them what to do and some people are just hey you know um from what i'm saying there's no hope and so some people they want to see something that's why we have leaders and we have followers that's just that the, we just need more leaders you know and we have very few of them and once they kill our leaders it's very hard to come up with another leader because they make sure that they make an example of those strong leaders that we had before so we just need leaders who are going to preach what he's saying that hey have hope you know there's light at the end of the tunnel don't look at this situation know that you're going to come out of it strong start your own thing you know and believe we need but no one is preaching that everyone is preaching like i'm the savior you know it's either they're saying that i'm the savior or they're saying hey look man it's hard they're just there's, there's no leader at all or they're just enjoying themselves they and trying to capitalize on those weaknesses of those people so but also it's none of the races that were slave, enslaved and oppressed and marginalized for centuries it's not their fault because they are suffering and trying to get off their trauma that's trauma and that's what trauma does you it gets you to be stuck victims of any trauma they get stuck it's hard to move on somewhere watching this interview there's a young thomas Sowell. There's an African American who's smart and wants to do something. This guy. <laughs> what seems Not to me, sure we've already got one doing. piece of advice you'd offer to him is stay away from the from the races industry. Stay away from the what race what, hustlers. what advice at race hustlers? What advice would you give a young Thomas soul? How do you make something of yourself as an African American in America today? The way anybody else would. You equip yourself with skills that people are willing to pay for. All right. Tom. Yeah, hey man, look. Phew, this is a long video. Look, um, Tom Tom. Uncle Tom. <laughs> hey, Uncle Tom. Uh, nah. Nah, Uncle. You definitely miss some. You, you, I don't know. You are old enough to know exactly what was happening in other African countries. Your Mandela's, your Thomas Sankara's. I mean, you like the like your Robert um, uh, Mugabe's. Like, um, I'm sure you live to. I mean, your um, um, your Gaddafi's. Um, just there's so many of them, Tom. You know that you could have you you should have known what they went through in order to get the liberation. You know they they had to fight, my guy. They had to fight, sir. Like, a lot. A lot. And it wasn't easy. And they said when they died, a luta continua, meaning that the struggle continues because they knew that the colonizers, they have this whole system that we are following to their advantage. It is rigged to the core. And for us to dismantle it, it's going to take years. Especially for those who are traumatized from all that have happened. It's going to take years to break it. It's going to take years. And um, and reparation is needed. It's very needed. We need our land. Definitely need our land. You know, because if we get the land, we get the minerals, we get the um, crops that grow, the fertile land, the crops that grow, we, we, we get the, the livestock that lives in the land and able to feed and grow and, and produce and, uh, yeah, reproduce. So land is very important and that's reparations political and economical before we get to mental physical and emotional um but yeah if that doesn't take place look that's that's, that's how we're gonna reset but of course this is like an idealistic um, um this is like a, a, it is an ambition project but it's a project that we must always fight for daily because it is needed we can't just sit there and like ah you know we don't want anything we're just gonna I don't know, try and buy land. You know, we're just going to try and buy and work hard and sweat and then get loans in order to buy properties from the people who take those properties from us without even purchasing them. So, hey. Anyway, this is me. It was a good, good, good video to check. I hope that you enjoyed it. It's super long. Um, but, yeah. See you on my next video.